Greetings all, lovely to see you all again. Chris Super here. Today we're gonna to be looking at the wonderful solo from It's a Monster by Extreme. Nuno is such a freaking monster. This is a crazy solo, but uh, I love it. Very dear to my heart. Bring back all those uh, lovely childhood memories. Anyway, enough about me. Let's take a look. Guys, before we get too excited, we just need to talk about the tuning, which is E flat standard, which goes E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and another E flat. So get yourself a tune, we'll get started. All right, guys, let's have a look at the first section. We're going to start with this little trem lick. So, what I want to do is have a look at what the actual melody is doing and then I will add the trim or the 30 second notes later. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be playing kind of a G minor idea. I'm playing, I'm playing 10, 13 on the fifth string and 12 of the fourth. Then I'm gonna play 12, 14, 15 on the third. And then the next group of three notes I have is working chromatically backwards from 15 of the second string. It's playing 15, 14, 13. So the note pulse that I've sort of got here is a dotted quaver or a, a dotted eighth note idea. So I'm sort of going dotted note, dotted note, and then sort of a regular quaver or eighth note after that. It's exactly the same pulse for all of those. So if I add sort of like a 30 second note uh, pulse to my picking, I'm gonna end up with six picks, six picks, and four picks. All together. Hopefully that's making sense. Then I go at the end of that. We can squeal that note if we want. It's 15 of the third string. At the end of that, I'm pulling off 15 to 12 on the third string, jumping to 15 of the fourth. And then jumping back to 12 of the third. At the end of that, I work into this phrase. Let's slow that down. I've got a tone and a half bend from 15 of the second string. That means that when I'm playing this 15th fret, 18th fret is gonna be my target note. Now, if I'm doing anything past a semitone or a whole tone, I need to get my whole body involved. Uh, I don't know whether it's just like a spiritual thing or whether it's just so freaking far that I need to use my shoulder. You notice that my whole shoulders lift up there. So I'm gonna do two of that tone and a half bend. The second time I hit that, I'm gonna pull off to 13. At the end of that, let's slow that down. I'm gonna play 15 twice and 14 twice on the second string. So I'm gonna play 13 of the second to 15 of the third. And I'm gonna repeat that idea again, but I'm gonna play two 13s. So we're gonna go. And that's gonna be the whole first section. Let's try that whole idea again at a gentleman's pace, and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. One more time, some tabs. All right, guys, let's have a look at the second section. Even though this doesn't have the crazy shreddy arpeggios that section three does, um, I would argue that this is actually more complex and there's a couple of more interesting things to consider. So we're gonna start off with this phrase. 
Let's slow that down. I'm in a high G minor pentatonic here. I'm playing 15 of the third string, pulling off 17, 15 on the fourth. Then I'm gonna do a string skip to 17 of the second string. At the end of that, let's slow that down. I've got to bend in and out just a semitone from 17 of the second string, getting a little bit of a cheeky Dorian vibe. Pulling off to 15, then jumping to 17 of the third. At the end of that, playing two 15s on the second, and then pulling off 17, 15 of the third. So it goes. Hopefully that's all making sense at the end of that. Nice cheeky blues rock lick there. I'm doing a flat finger from 15 of the first and the second string. At the end of that, I'm doing two bends from 15, sorry, 18 of the second string, pulling off to 15. Let's have a look at what we've got thus far from the start. That last phrase that I did, I had a pull off from 17 to 15 on the first string, and then a, just a semitone bend from there. And that's the first half of this whole section. Let's do that one more time, then we'll add the second half. Okay, the next bit's a little bit fast and tricky, but we'll break it down nice and slow. This kind of messed me up a little bit, and there's an interesting position shift in it. So this is what we're gonna be dealing with. We'll slow that down. Very G minor pentatonic, we're just gonna be accentuating that flat five. He's gonna get some love there. So what I've got at the start of this is 1815 as a pull off on the first and the second string. And then just playing that 18 on the third string and that's gonna be five notes. Now from the next thing that I do, I'm gonna to jump to uh, 15 of the first string and I'm essentially just gonna repeat the notes that we had before without that note at the front. So we're gonna go at the end of that, after I've hit 18 of the third string, I'm gonna jump back down to 15 of the second altogether. At the end of that, let's go through this slowly. I'm gonna play 17, 18 on the third and 15 of the second. Then I'm gonna play 17 of the third and then 15, 14 on the second. I'm adding sort of a slight, almost a quarter note bend on that 14. Now you'll notice, the first time I hit that 17, I'm using my middle finger, and the second time I'm using my ring to make sort of that mild position shift happen so I can get that slight bend over there on 14. At the end of that, I was just playing 17, 15 on the third. So let's go from this fast pentatonic lick, I'll slow it down. Hopefully that's making sense. Then I work into this phrase. It's a bit of a strange lick, but anyway, we're rolling from 17 of the second string to 17 of the third. And then when I go from that flat finger, I'm rolling from the ring middle to the pointer on the third string. So it's a chromatic of three notes, 17, 16, 15. At the end of that, I'm doing two string skips. Um, so I'm doing two lots of notes on with a string skip in between. I don't know why that was so hard to say. I'm playing 17, 15 on the second, then 17, 15 on the fourth with a string skip in between and legato as well. So from the phrase before now, at the end of that, it's a bit of a strange uh, sequence of notes, but it sounds quite delicious in the grand scheme of things. I'm playing 15, 16 as a hammer on on the fourth string. Kind of interesting bluesy phrase there to 17 of the third. And I'm going down an octave from, I guess, what would be in standard tuning of C, but I guess it's a B now. I'm playing 15 of the third string. All together. And that is the whole section. Okay, so let's go right back to the start of the section, play it all again at a gentleman's pace, and then again, even slower with some tabs. More time with some tabs. All right, 
guys, section three. So there's a lot of different position shifts and shred patterns going on. It does look a lot more complicated than it actually is. Once you get the two shapes that we're gonna be looking at, we'll just move them around. So we're gonna start off with this. What I'm doing here is essentially kind of like a, it's sort of outlining a D major arpeggio shape, uh, but we've got a couple of notes in between. So I'm playing 16, 17, 19 on the fourth string. And then I'm gonna be playing 15, 17, 19 on the second string. So there's a string skip there. And then I'm just gonna reverse that. At the end of that, I'm gonna roll that back to 14 on the fourth string where we start our next position. And that's gonna be how it works. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So sort of two groups of six, and then we're at the next position. So that was the first shape. And then the next one. Next one's a little bit more abrasive and sort of got a diminished harmonic minor vibe. Uh, but once we get this, we'll have our two shapes and that will get us through most of the section. I'm gonna be playing 14, 16, 17, starting with a whole half kind of uh, shape there. Then when I jump to here, I'm playing 13, 16, 17. That's got a, uh, what is it? A tone and a half and a semitone. So that's got a bit of a harmonic minor vibe because we won't see that in a diatonic major scales. So the same idea that we had before, we're gonna work our way up and back and then do a position shift. And that goes back to 12. This is what we should have thus far. Now you'll notice that where I end gets picked at the start of the new phrase. So you're gonna have a position shift note and then a new note to start the next phrase. When I get back to 12, I'm gonna borrow the shape that I just did. So we're going 12, 14, 15, 11, 14, 15. Now that one isn't gonna go back a semitone, and then we're gonna borrow the first shape we had. So from what I had on 16, 17, 18, I'm gonna play 11, 12, 14, and then 10, 12, 14. That will end on nine. So if you have a look what we've got from the start, I've got four mini shreds across four bars, but I'm really only using two shapes. When I get back to ninth fret of the fourth string, I'm gonna do that kind of weird diminished shape again. If you wanna change fingers here, cause it's getting a little bit bigger on the stretch as you can. What I'm doing there is 9, 11, 12, and then 8, 11, 12 with a reversal. Reversing that back to seven, and then I'm gonna repeat that sort of diminished D shape again there. Sorry. That one's gonna end on sixth fret. So what I was doing here was seven, nine, 10, six, nine, 10. And that's gonna end on the sixth fret of the fourth string. So from the second half of this chunk, we should have this. Then from here, what I'm doing here is the major shape again. So what we had on 16, 17, 19, 11, 12, 14, I'm gonna bring back to six, seven, nine on the fourth. Now the only thing that's different this time is that I'm gonna hit the six on the fourth string twice because I don't wanna do a position shift. That shape again is six, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, and then I reverse it, double pick the six on the way back. At full speed, you can probably just do that as one note and just sort of elongate it out for, um, I guess, what would be a tripleted eighth note, I believe, something like that. And then we go into just working with uh, sort of basic Paul Gilbert triplet ideas here. I'm playing six, seven, nine on the fifth and the fourth, and then seven, nine, 11 on the fifth and the fourth. So that whole last chunk. So let's have a look at what we've got thus far and heaps of that is going to repeat on the second half. Okay, that's all going to repeat all the way up to sixth fret of the fourth string. So if we repeat it all the way to here, 
So we're here and then we're working into this phrase. That's the end of the solo. So it's pretty cool. We're gonna repeat those first six arpeggio shapes and then add this uh, shred to it. So I was playing six, seven, nine on the fourth and third, and then five, seven, nine on the second and the first string. And we're just gonna reverse that all the way back down, but I will end on nine of the fourth string. Now the interesting thing about that kind of when you're doing a three note per string shape, but you keep it in a box, you kind of double up on what would be, I guess in standard tuning, that E note. But you can kind of, if you're say using this in your own compositions, it does have an interesting flavor to it, having a couple of notes doubling up. So uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. I'll show you that one little shred again. At the end of that, I've got an F power chord from first and third. And then this is our sort of, I guess, what would be a minor six or an inverted D chord. I'm playing two of the six and uh, five of the third. And a cheeky G there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right back to the start. I'll play it in full this time. So I will repeat those uh, arpeggiated shreds, but you will notice it's essentially the same thing twice with some variations right at the end. Here we go. time with some tabs. And that was the solo from It's a Monster. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please click the links in the description box to join up with the Patreon if you want tabs to this lesson and anything else that I do. Also have three books that I would like to share with you. Ultimate Shred Machine is out now. My first book, Upping Your Chops in Shredding, Sweeping, Legato and Tapping. My second book, Rock Guitar Mode Master, if you want to up your understanding of the modes in an improvised and composed context. And of course, my third book, Shred Guitar Improvisation, teaching you about different sequences, chord changes, and just ways to make sexy solos. And if you want all of them in one definitive volume, ta-da, I have a trilogy out now as well. So you can just grab them all at once. And if you're not much of a reader, I do have all three courses, books, all three books available in video courses on Udemy and chrissuper.com. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I'll catch you all very soon.